Author Salman Rushdie accusing West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee of blocking his visit to Kolkata. Actor director Kamal Hassan says he is ready to go into self exile if there's no secular state that can house him in this country. Academic Ashish Nandi also saying he will now speak his mind only abroad or within the four walls of his own home. Is the space for free speech fast disappearing in this country? You're watching The Social Network. Today we ask free speech under attack. Are we forcing our writers and artists? to withdraw into silence. Well, joining us uh, for that discussion from Mumbai, we'll have Rahul Bose, actor, Lucian Dubey, theatre director and screen actor, also likely to join us uh, on this debate. We also have in the Delhi studio, Adil Mehdi, professor of uh, Jamia University. He also filed a petition against Ashish Nandi and professor Bindu Menon, um, who teaches journalism in Lady Sri Ram College. But let me begin first with what our viewers have been uh, uh, writing in. They've been also sending video blogs to us. Uh, let's listen in to what Namita has to say on this subject. Uh, I personally believe that uh, five FIR against uh, Ashish Nandi is way too much uh, in a democratic country like uh, India. And uh, like even in uh, Salman Rushdie's case, even though he's a good uh, writer, his statements about the religion, even it was questioned, especially about uh, this uh, in the literary fest in Kolkata, where uh, he was uh, denied uh, for you know coming to uh, the fest. I think it was it was also way too much. All right. Are we then asking our authors and artists to mind their P's and Q's in any situation? Let me take that to you, Adil. Um, in current situation, it might appear so. Uh, and I think that, uh, uh, as we said in our uh, statement, that perhaps media also played a role in blowing it up. Um, and. In well, let's let, let's put it as sections of the media at any rate. Yeah, I think there was, uh, there was a fair amount of responsible journalism on that story yeah, as well. By a section of media initially. So therefore, it leads to instant justice, instant condemnation, instant demand for punishment uh, without really stopping to think about uh, nuances, whether uh, it uh, one uh, piece of offense is as great as any other. So it irons out what a politician might uh, say to get votes or what somebody do to sell a book or a, or a film or uh, an academic who has an impeccable record uh, saying something. Which All right, I think there are many strands in this. So let's take the case of Ashish Nandi uh, separately for the moment. This was somebody speaking at a semi-academic plat on a semi-academic platform. He was making a point which he clarified later in great detail, um, which was actually very much in support of um, uh, the Dalit community. Um, you know, he made a very telling point about the different corruptions involved. Um, do you believe that perhaps now there is a situation, given the kind of total connectivity that we have, that anyone who is saying anything has to be mindful of a larger audience? Um, well, um, I do believe that um, um, what, you know, the manner of speaking that Ashish Nandi um, invoked in the JLF perhaps was also very uh, crucial in spurring a, a lot of debates. For example, I mean, one has to, to understand him now, we have to invoke uh, the, the, the whole body of work that he has done, uh, his, uh, you know, probably uh, non-normative use of the term corruption, he doesn't use it the way, the derogatory way in which it is usually used, etc., which is all invoked now to understand the entire debate. And I think like what you suggested, it is now very important, especially with uh, the possibility of any kind of speech, any kind of public articulation to go viral. And the presence of media technology here should also probably alert us, everybody who speaks, makes a public articulation to be conscious of what kind of context and what kind of speech is proper to what uh, venue and what audience, you know, I think that right. is a... Let me bring in Lucian Dubey at this point. Thank you for joining us. As a, an actor, a theatre di director yourself, I mean, today we're looking at whether artists, in a sense, are being forced to mind their P's and Q's, uh, be wary, be circumspect in every situation that they find themselves. Do you believe that India really is becoming uh, a space where perhaps uh, uh, a country where the space for free speech is now getting limited? <clears throat> Well, firstly, I think that as an actor and as a director, one of the main prerequisites is to be a good psychologist. And I think 
that extends itself in the creation of your work, not just with working with the co-peers and uh, you know the other actors and so forth, but also in the extension of what you create. So you have to be, and as you know that I do uh, a lot of work uh, which is subject oriented, which is extremely provocative in terms of the material. Um, like I said yes, day before, I think on NDTV, I did a you know a production on terrorism. I mean, I had to have that pass through many hands before I could finally put down something on stage. And before that, I had to get Muslims and Hindus in little lots, like mock audiences, to look at it, because uh, sensitivities are so so important. I think the basic thing is that in our country, like India where there is such diversity. I mean, even Galbraith said something like it is the toughest country to, to take care of, to look after. The first thing we have to realize is that there are going to be extremely uh, divergent mindsets. There are. First, if we accept that, that there are going to be these divergent mindsets, then it flows into almost everything we do. What we say, what we speak, what we create, we have to. Therefore, I feel that in a sense there has to be, uh, shall I say, granular or even very fine-tuned assessment boards. Who I, I, I don't know who exactly is on the censorship board. I mean, I have some idea. But when we have a censorship board, it should represent the mindsets of several not just because they're qualified to do something like this, but because they must I think, represent okay, that, that, that actually the mindset. brings up a very important point. You may know, I when you do have uh, a, a, a sense of it, yes, yeah. certainly continue. So f I think that is extremely important in terms of having an assessment board or the leaders or the people who are going to decide. And there shouldn't be just one. It should be at least three runs or four runs because we are seeing very clearly that there will be supposedly and very obviously sometimes uh, somebody who's a leader we call a leader who is actually taking care of us in terms of you know being at the top run who will make comments which uh, you know who may be intelligent he he, he is somebody who's worldly traveled etc right. but he will make a comment that is like uh, we're surprised that he made it I mean, it is so. Uh, it, it is set in such medieval settings in terms of its wordings and whatever has been said. So I think then we realize this first premise right. that there is this divergence. All right. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app, fully optimized for Retina display, full screen view, faster response time. And Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.